If there's one thing I'm known for, it's for making that Roblox full guide to loving a woman tutorial, right? What was I thinking when I made that tutorial? Who knows, okay? But, and this is an amazing segue, in a relationship, you're binded to another person, right? So in come the bindable events and bindable functions, okay? Now, I will go into this video assuming you know about remote events and remote functions. And if you don't, just I'll give you a quick understanding. A remote event is used to communicate between a server script and a client script or vice versa. So from a client script to, to a server script and the remote function also does the same thing, but it also sends some value back. So for example, if you fire a remote function from the server, it's going to fire from the server to the client. Then the client is going to do some function and then it's going to return a value back to the server or again, vice versa from the client to the server, back to the client, right? That's the idea. But bindable event and bindable function act in the exact same way, except they're meant to be from server to server or client to client. Okay. So let me, let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to create this event, right? And I'll just call this sure event. Why not? And then I'm going to make, um, two server scripts. Okay. So I'll make a script. I don't know. And then I'll just make a script too. So we, we have two scripts, right? And we have one event. The purpose of this event is to basically allow script to communicate between one another. Okay. So let me, let me, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to make a variable for this event. So I'll say local event equals game, uh, dot replicated storage, wait for child event, wait for child, just to make sure that it, you know, loads and everything. And I'll co copy this line over to the second script. There we go. So very similar to remote events, a bindable event simply can be fired and then can be received, right? So let's assume that the first script is going to fire a message. So I'll say event or oh, there we go. event colon fire. There we go. So what this does is now fires the event. And also I'm able to pass in any value that I want here, but I'll get to that in a bit, right? Let's just focus on the basics. So you can fire this event, but now it's like, how do I know that this event has been fired inside of this script? Well, what I can do is I can say event, and then I can say dot, um, and then I think it's like event. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Event dot event. Okay. And then we can connect that to a function. So basically whenever we call event colon fire, this function that's connected to dot event will fire. And then we could just print something like hello, right? There we go. So we're firing the events. Okay. And then once we, you know, do colon fire, then anything with a dot event will run this function, right? So if I play the game, let's see. Uh, okay. Actually, you know why? Probably some, it's not firing because look, okay, let, let, let me try this while, uh, wait one, because sometimes Roblox is weird, like it, like this script maybe loads in before this script, so it doesn't connect before it, it's, it's just weird. But if we just fire every second, this should work. And the reason we're firing every second is just so we ensure that like, like this script has fully loaded in, right? Because sometimes it, it takes a while to load. So let's see, let's play. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah. So every second it's firing the event and then this server script catches it right and runs our function and we can see that it's on the second script because we can see it says two over here so on line so two is, is the name of the script and four is the line at which it's printing there we go awesome and so yeah as you can see it's printing from um i mean it's 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 firing from server to server right and you could also do uh, client to client right um so let me let me actually show you that so i'll do I'll make two local scripts. Okay. I'll also name it one and I'll also name this two and I'll have the same thing where I'll just take this line. I'll do this and then I'll put this here. Um, and then I'll have the same thing here where I'll say events, wait, events fire. Um, then here events dot event connect function. There we go. And I'll actually do the same thing where I'm just looping every second. This shouldn't be a problem, like 
in an actual game because likely like I, I i doubt that you're gonna fire the event at the moment the game starts like i'm sure it's gonna have time to load in and you're not gonna need a wait statement but just for the sake of this tutorial i'm just having it fire every second just so like we know that okay it it's loaded right um and here let's print local okay so here's what's gonna happen yeah so now we have two server scripts that are that are talking to one another and two local scripts that are connecting from one another and so here's the thing so let's 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 play right now hello local hello local hello local hello local there we go and so as you can see right it prints out local and hello every second but but like like okay okay wait what this what this showcases right so this showcases how bindable events differ from remote events right now i already talked about this but just again you know just kind of drill the concept in when you fire a bindable event from let's say a server script it's only going to fire to another server script right so if i were to fire from this server script then this local script even though it's waiting for the event even though it's waiting for the same exact event this isn't going to fire this is only this function is only going to run when you call fire from a local script right and same thing in in in, in the server script so this function will only run if you do fire in a server script right be because otherwise we'd be printing them twice every second right because if, it, if it's firing every second then it would print out this and this and if this is firing every second then it would also print out this and this right so if we have two scripts that are firing every second then we should get two of these every second but we're not we're only getting one every second right so that, that, that that's kind of there to show you right but i'll delete the local scripts because i assume you kind of understand how they work and another another thing is you're also able to actually pass information through these events so i can say something like i don't know hello right i can pass the, this information here and then when it, when it passes this information the way we, re, we we like receive that information is we give it a name so we give it a variable name so i can give it like text variable right so now so now we're expecting that when we get this event we're also going to get a value which we're going to store as a variable called text variable right so and if and so like if we're giving it hello then this text variable is going to be equal to hello. So I, if I could just print out text variable. And so every second it's going to, yeah, it's going to print out hello, right? And if you don't give it any value, but you still have a variable, then, then this is just going to be equal to nothing or nil. So it's going to print out nil every second. Yeah, there we go. So, because we, we didn't give it any value, right? Um, so that's that. And the second thing I want to talk about was uh, remote functions, which actually I haven't used these much myself. So bear with me. But uh, yeah, let's call this, um, you know, what? I'll just I'll keep calling calling it event, whatever. Um, oh, no, not remote function. Bindable function. There we go. Function, function. OK. So for a function, uh, whatever, okay, bindable function. Okay, so how it works is that I can say bindable function and then two dots, right? And I forgot exactly which, I think it was invoke. Yeah, yeah, okay, invoke. There we go. So what we're doing here is we're invoking the function, right? So we're asking it, okay, like, you know, like we're, we're firing the bindable function, right? And then for the second script, we can do bindable function dots on invoke, but instead of connecting, we make it equal to a function. So this is weird. I'm not sure why it works like this, but it's not gonna allow you to connect it to a function, right? Which I think it's because this is a function itself. So maybe we're like, I, I don't know. I don't know why Roblox does this. Like this is this is confusing, right? Don't 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 worry if you don't understand why everything isn't the same, right? Like I wish it was too, but we will have to deal with this for now. Um, and yeah, so what this does is it invokes this, so this function, right? So we can, we, you know, we can do some calculations and then we can return a value. So that's the beauty of it. So I can return something like one, two, three. And so then what this is going to return one, two, three. So I can make this equal to a variable. So I can make, I can say, okay, local value is equal to 
and then we're gonna invoke this function. It's gonna, you know, like scout all the other server scripts, you know, to make like to look for this on invoke. If it finds them, then it's gonna run this, right? It's gonna be like, oh, okay. So then we we return a value. Or if you don't return anything, it's gonna be nil. So it's gonna return nil. Um and then it's and then like once once the function is done, it goes back to the script where we called it, and it makes this equal to whatever value we returned. So then value is going to be equal to one, two, three. And then if we print out value, let's see. I, I don't think I'll have to loop it again. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So it's printing out one, two, three on the first script, right? And again, right, this only works from server to server or from client to client, right? This does not work from server to client or from client to server because for that, you would have to use a remote event and a remote function, okay? So, you know, hopefully that clears things up. Um, check out the comments. I have a course there, you know, so if you're interested, you know, you can go check that out. And we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.